Most of the time, you don't actually have data for the whole system for a single year, but you've got to try data for that. The other main assumption or equation that it uses is that what you eat equals um, the production plus the unassimilated food plus the respiration. So they're the three things you've got to cover out of what you eat. And that means that there are some nice rules of thumb that fall out about the ratio of what you consume versus what you see as production. So some of those rules that we now hear about a lot that have been backed up by data is that 10%, 10% of the biomass, only one tenth of what you eat appears in the next trophic level. Okay. Those kind of rules were explored using it. So this is what to lose the audience again, this is the basic equation behind eco -car. They often reorganise it to make it easy to solve. So basically what you get is a set of simultaneous equations. So it's actually a really straightforward process. But you can, if you are someone who likes to do things, you can unpack that code. You can either share the repository with them, it's an open source piece of software, <coughs> or you can actually retype it yourself. It's a pretty straightforward piece of mathematics. But if you think about the way that it's actually representing the web, it's representing pools of biomass and then the consumption transfers between them. So for any one, any one kind of uh, animal, you've got the total consumption is basically the sum over all of the things it eats, the prey mortality is total consumption of biomass, and the, the standard of fishing mortality, which is just catching biomass. So they're all pretty simple pieces of information to try and pull together. That's why it's almost impossible to do it anywhere in the world. You always have to bring in information from somewhere else. And we'll get into data pedigrees and how you deal with that a little bit later on. So if you think about how biomass can dissipate through the system, so you have the bit, they have the respiration side of things, the unassimilated food side of things, but you also have this E. That was another source of controversy around the co-path. It's, it's ecotrophic efficiency. How much of the production of that animal is used within the system? And really it's just a fitting parameter. It's really explaining what you can't explain with the model. It's saying this proportion of that animal's production I don't cover in this model. Most of the time an experienced model will let the model have that as its unspecified term and it's simultaneously equation. So it's solving to give you E. E is what's spat out. And you can Use that then to see how sensible your input assumptions were. Because most of the time there's a pretty good idea about what roughly the E should be as you go through the system. Something you do see that you can do, because really you've just got to have one unexplained term per equation, you can see people put in an E if they, have, they don't know what the biomass is. That's a slightly dangerous thing because it says you know enough about the system to say what you can't say about the system. And typically, if you don't know what the biomass is, you probably shouldn't be specifying how much of it you know you're using. Basically, though, it should be close to one for most groups. So if you think about the middle of the system, it should be fairly close to one for that. That's the part you're focused on. It should be explaining most of the system there. At the bottom part, the microbial food web, as lots of you would already know, a lot of that isn't, doesn't ever enter the metazoan food web. The big food web gets turned over at the bottom. So those EEs can actually be quite lot because they're actually just going to the tribes and out of the out of the other side of this. Um, and at the top end, the very top predators, most of those be close to zero because not lots of they don't get really get eaten by much. It's a question across most end-to-end -end models about those top predators. So whether it's Atlantis or Osmos or EWE or whatever, we are missing knowledge on the fundamental thing that controls sharks. Every one of the models in the world wants to fill the world with sharks. We don't know what controls those top traffic levels. It's not predation. It's not food. There's usually enough food in that form. There's going to be some other mechanic that we don't know that we can follow. But pretty much we can say, give the rules of thumb about what EE should be. Um, a, basically what this little message means is that for your forage animals, the animals in the middle that are the food for most things, they're not very likely to die of old age. So you should be explaining most of their mortality through predation. Okay, so if we think about that consumption equation we had before, so consumption equals production, respiration, and un unassimilated food, then really what you do to get respiration is you're just reorganising it to get that. So there's lots of, there, 
Because there are sets of simultaneous equations and you can have as many groups as you like, which has created its own little almost religious groups within the ecopath world, you have a minimum number of groups, you have a maximum number of groups, are you a lumper or a splitter? <laughs> we have a bit of a joke term called, is that an Oki model? You seem to have like 400 groups every time you does anything. You have to be a little bit careful about how you put these things together. But because there can be so many groups, there are so many parameters, they tempted to start fiddling with things. Things that are probably not best left um, alone, but probably don't need to very well. So the only thing that changing your unassimilated food affects is respiration. It's not really going to help you cascade through the whole model balance. It is useful, but you know, don't waste a lot of time. Basically, again, rules of thumb. Use EcoPath is a bit of a cartoon of the world, really. It's an insightful, useful cartoon, but what you see often with people who've come from a hydrodynamics or a physical background or a plankton background, they really worry about the fourth decimal place. When you don't know the detritus for two orders of magnitude, don't worry about the fourth decimal place, okay? It's a rough cartoon. If you're after trying to get the picture accurate, you're not after exactly a precise picture, you're not going to get it, okay? So your rules of thumb will work okay. So the defaults at about 20%, and that's generally okay. There's a couple of kinds of animals where a slightly higher value makes more ecological sense, but you can refine that as you go through. So it's about a bit like sketching, if you've ever seen an artist work, you sort of sketches in the basic picture first and then it fills in the detail. Okay, so what you've got to do when you're defining your groups, uh, you've got to have at least one detritus group, so you're going to define things as dead or alive. Even I can manage that one, that's pretty easy. Then you've got whether they're a producer or a consumer, so if they're a primary producer, are they things like kelp or algae or phytoplankton, or are they consumer? So the one that usually gets short shrift in Eco Park is bacteria. Theoretically, you can have a bacteria that's a bit productive, a bit producer, a bit consumer. I'm about the only person who ever puts bacteria in eco path model. Most people like to get rid of that one because they love. The other aspect that they've brought in over the last probably five or six years is to allow for having multiple age classes. So that you can actually, before you had to have them as separate groups, now you can actually have it spread out. So you have a little bit of a population model for a group inside. So you can have a larval stage and a juvenile stage and an adult stage that are all interconnected. The very first version of EcoPath and EcoSim, because they were separate groups, you could have all your adult fish eat all the baby fish and not suffer an impact. So that's why I had to put this connected stanza approach so that you didn't break some of the rules of conservation of population as before. Okay, so this is how multi stanzas work. You basically break it. They don't have to be even numbers of ages. You can see that there's quite a large number of this adult number of age beings in this adult group versus the youngest group. But basically what you're trying to do is look for where there's bottlenecks in the system. So you're trying to find total mortality rates, if there's shifts in prey or habitat through time, if there's different ways that they use the system basically, or if there's different vulnerabilities to fish efficiency. So particularly if there's a tension between fleets, so a lot of the times you've got one fleet, so say the shrimp fleet in the Gulf of Mexico, is catching baby snapper. Those baby snapper can grow up to be the target of a different fishery. So that can cause an interaction between the fisheries and actually lead to physical violence between the fisheries, not just cause ecological problems. There was a, um, I uh, did a lot of work on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, and there was a brawl in a fishing town one day between the old fishermen who used one particular method that didn't affect reefs and the young fishermen who used the different method that did affect reefs, and the police just stood back and said, well, we're not getting the middle of this. They can sort it out between them. It lasted for four days. <laughs> not quite as long as when the Australians fought the Americans in World War II, but that's interesting. So basically, when you're trying to create groups in, um, in any ecological model, but particularly in eco part, you have to think about what you want your groups to represent. So you don't typically break it up taxonomically. You break it up based on the role of that animal in the system. So it's kind of a function, it's literally a function of what function does that 
through Pedal system. What does it eat? What habitat does it use? Does it provide habitat for something?